Okay, so uh, the first thing I'm going to start off with is just a little bit of some of the language of statistics. And uh, you'll find that it does have some uh, uh, words and things that are, are a little bit of, uh, of uh, uh, different. And don't slight yourself on this part because when we get to those problems like in exam three, uh, you'll have to know this stuff on the fly. This is the kind of thing that will determine what kind of problem you're, uh, uh, you're working. So uh, this is just some of the basic stuff that's going to go with every problem, especially when we get into the last half of the class. Um, so when you collect data, you're going to collect it from someone or from some object. So we'll just refer to those. The most general terms are either individual or element. So that's who we're collecting the data from. And when, you'll see when we start writing uh, uh, or, or doing some things with computers, every row in the spreadsheet or whatever we're using is going to be one individual. And uh, uh, might also, especially if you're doing experiments, you might call that a subject or a participant. Um, if you're uh, just watching things, you might call it an observation. One thing I forgot to put on here is uh, if you're doing a survey, then uh, usually refer to an o, a survey respondent. So, but uh, I generally will ask it as individual, but uh, those are just some other words that will uh, mean the same thing. Okay, so the individual is who or what you're getting the data from. Variable is what you're measuring and varies from one individual to another. Uh, might be exam score, so some people are going to get this exam score, someone another one, varies from individual to individual. Um, uh, it might be uh, gender, might be uh, whether or not you came to class tonight. Um, so the variable is just something that well varies from one person to another. And we'll divide that into two general categories. The first uh, type of variable is a qualitative or categorical just means something you're going to put into category categories. It doesn't have to be a number. Uh, you could ha it could be uh, gender, male or female. could be uh, color of eyes or color of car, favorite soft drink or whatever. Uh, so when we have a categorical or qualitative variable, we're just going to put things into categories. Uh, and we're going to divide that into two. A binomial just means we put into two categories like you answered yes or no, male or female. So just two categories. Whereas multinomial means many categories or more than two. Um, color of car, red, yellow, black, blue. Uh, so just many categories. And just to, you don't need to know this now, but just as a precursor, when we do um, um, Z test for proportion, they're based on binomial variables. When we do the chi-square test, if you look in your chapter on your calculator, these are just chapters we're going to get to. That's when you have a multinomial. So again, it's going to, you're going to have those are tests for categorical variables, and they depend on whether you have two or many categories. Um, so the second broad uh, set or type of variable is a numerical or a quantitative. Now the numbers really are measuring something. So like number of people in the room or how long it takes to uh, uh, walk from my office down to here. Um, so just something you're measuring numerically, number of dollars you have in your pocket or whatever. And that's going to be divided into two types. Um, a discrete just means basically whole objects that you're counting. So basically that really just comes down to things that you count, like the number of people in the classroom, um, number of cars in the parking lot. Uh, you're just counting whole, uh, whole units of something. Now that's going to cover, counting is going to cover 99.9% .9 of all discrete variables and all of the discrete variables that we'll cover. The only thing I can think of that's discrete that's not counting would be something like shoe size. 
where they can be six, six and a half, seven, seven and a half, and so on, or hat size, the same kind of thing. But for everything we'll do, we're just going to, with a discrete variable, it's just something we're counting. Whereas continuous, which will be most of the things that we do, can be anywhere on the on a scale. Um, so how long it takes to walk from point A to point B, um, amount of money you have in your pocket or, or whatever. Um, so again, that the individual, the variable, and the type of the variable, this type of variable is going to be really important in terms of what kind of problem uh, um, we'll be working later on. Um, you get down to numerical, we're going to have a, all, like t-test, z-test for means, um, f-test will be the test that we'll use there. Um, the other, I guess, set of terminology is the stuff that I have over here. Um, Population is just the entire group of individuals in which you are interested. So it might be like, I drew this as a big circle here. It might be all um, ATU students. So maybe you want to do a study and you'd like to know something about all students here at Arkansas Tech, um, especially if it's something you were doing or something that wasn't already entered on a, a computer, it would take a lot of time to get the whole population. And so you don't want to do that. So we have the whole population, but what we're going to do is collect a sample from that population. So this would be your population's the whole thing, and then this is just your sample. Maybe it might be 50 ATU students. And then we're going to use the information in this sample to try and say something about the larger population. Um, so the parameter and st statistic thing here, the parameter is a characteristic of the whole population. And a statistic is a characteristic just for the sample. Um, give you a couple here. Don't worry too much about these symbols now. Maybe want to write them down or think about them. But, um, We'll, we'll be coming back to these things. Um, if you were talking about the average or the mean, for a parameter, it's going to be mu. That's the population mean. And then the statistic is x bar. So those correspond to one another. So mu would be the average for the whole population. And x bar is just what we calculated from the sample we will almost exclusively be calculating the sample statistic, the sample mean. And then thinking about that to test hypothesis or estimate the population parameter. Some other, and that'll be the most important one here for a while, but some other parameters and statistics um, P is the population proportion. So it might be the proportion of Arkansas Tech students that uh, uh, live on campus. So that's for all students, the proportion that live on campus. And the statistic is going to be P with a hat over it, sample proportion. The other ones that I'll uh, just kind of uh, line up here have to do with a linear relationship between two variables. Um, so like, you know, when you calculate a line and you have a slope. So for the population, the slope is going to be beta. And for the sample, it's going to be B. Now we'll get into the, those. B will start into like chapter maybe, I don't know if it's in four or five. So it's still some time off. Uh, and also with lines, there's one other thing. It's called, uh, this is a, a row, it's sort of a sideways P pronounced row. That'll be the correlation, an index of how closely related two variables are. And we'll calculate R. I'm in, like in my day class, we're on like the fourth class period. 
we haven't gotten to that yet. Just the mean stuff right now. And then something else will compute in a minute, the, the standard deviation. Questions on just yeah. 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 So now I've just got a problem here. Got a random sample of uh, 50 rats. The average time it takes to run through the maze is uh, two and a half minutes. And uh, we're going to identify the basic characteristics uh, for this. Um, so what would be the individual in that case? One rat. Okay. What would the variable be? Time it takes to run through the maze? Is that a categorical slash qualitative or numerical quantitative variable? Are we just putting things into categories? Are we just are we really measuring something numerically? We're measuring something numerically, the time it takes. We're not just putting these into categories like fast or slow. We're actually measuring the whole time here. So that's going to be, and uh, is that discrete or continuous? Continuous. You could measure time. It's not just counting something. You're actually measuring it on some uh, continuous scale. Yeah, you won't see my shadow when you're watching it online either. I will be in another little window somewhere. <laughs> that's the camera right there. Uh, Questions about that part? I hope it's actually saving that. So here's the same problem. Um, remember we said that uh, the individual was one rat. So what's the population? That would be the sample. The sample is the 50 rats. See, in a random sample of 50. And so when we make our calculation here of the 2.5 minutes, that's for this sample. So what would the population be? All rats. So when you're looking at that individual population sample, one rat's the individual, all of them the population, and those that you include in your sample, in this case the 50, would be uh, the sample. And um, it says average here, but we will usually call that the mean. Average really is a broader t term and would include things like the median and the mode and some other measures of uh, central tendency. Um, so uh, the parameter in this case, it's the characteristics of the population. So it's the population. mean. Conveniently, both the words population and parameter begin with the letter P. That's kind of convenient. As is that sample and statistic both begin with the letter S, so it's a little memory kind of thing there. Uh, and then the statistic would be the sample mean. Symbolically, the population mean is mu, and the sample mean is x bar. Questions on that? Why it's disappearing like that every time. So here's another one. 
random sample of 100 law firms. The average number of partners employed at the firm is 4.3. Um, what's the individual? One law firm. And what's the uh, variable? That's not the variable. That would actually be the statistic. So what's the variable? What this is your measuring law firms. What are you? If you want to think of it as what are you asking each law firm? How many partners? So it's just the number of partners. Or if you want to put the number of partners employed at a firm, I'll just leave that at number of partners. Is that categorical or numerical? Qualitative or quantitative? It's quantitative, um, and we're counting the number. Now, this is where people have a little bit of trouble on this one. You see the 4.3. You can't judge by that's having decimals or not. You have to go by what you're asking each one. And someone either has five partners or two or eight. So that is a discrete. You have to ask that about the variable, the number of partners. And we can just count the number of partners. And make sure you're careful about that one. That seems to be the one that historically has given people a little more problem than some others. Because the variable is number of partners. So you have one partner, two, three, four. You don't you can't have two point three partners for one law firm. But you could have two at one, four at another, five in the other, six, two, and the average could be four point three. But that's the average. It's you have to these are types of variables. So you just need to look at the variable specifically and then look to see whether when one person answers this question, or one law firm answers the question, do they give numbers on a continuous scale, or are they just counting? And so if I went to one law firm and asked them how many partners, they can't give me fractional numbers, or that wouldn't make sense. I guess they're lawyers, so they can lie, so they could give you any number. It, it's numerical or quantitative and discrete. Well, these are only relevant if it's a categorical. So we're asking this question. It's this one, none of that. Okay, so it's either in this group or this one. So once we've decided we're down here, we've eliminated categorical or qualitative altogether. Other questions on mm -hmm. I've got that on the next uh, page. But yes. So the population would be well shoot. Okay. Looks like I missed a page. <laughs> so uh, we'll just write that in here. Uh, the population is, as you say, all law firms. And I'll just go ahead and put parameter here. still talking about averages, so the parameter is going to be population, mean, mu. In fact, no matter what parameter we talk about, the first thing is you write the word population. And then, in this case, mean, which is mu. And then the sample is the 100 law firms. And the statistic 
again. Statistic, always the first word is sample. And then whatever you're calculating, which is the mean in this case. And that's x bar. Somehow, I think they they call it upgrading, but I think they downgraded. I don't know what they did. Or maybe I'm just doing something wrong, but someone else couldn't do it either. I used to be able to hold this in my hand and still go down here and advance or slides and so on, but we found out this weekend, you have to put this back in there. I don't know why it's just taking everything off of there, but I'm wondering. I mean, aha. We'll go here. <laughs> I think I just forgot to say it changed the problem at the, I actually did have the population stuff. So uh, this one we have a random sample of 50 pizza deliveries, 41 were delivered on time. So what is the individual? A pizza delivery. This is one of those ones I would call an observation instead of an individual, but that's, so one, pizza delivery. By the way, if I repeat your question sometimes, because I know they're probably not going to be able to hear for you guys, so don't think that I'm weird because I'm repeating your question or anything. Well, you can think that if you want, but <laughs> uh, there is another uh, reason. Of course, I'll forget to do that sometimes too, but... Uh, so what's the variable in this case? Delivered on time. I'm going to put that whether or not delivered on time. So we you could formulate that as a question and say, was it delivered on time? That would be fine too. Uh, but if you just said delivered on time, we want to make sure that it's a variable that's going to go be different for some deliveries and not others. Is that qualitative? So it's going to be, we're not measuring the time that they, how long it took them to get there. We could say, how long did it take for them to get from here to there? But all we asked was, was it on time or not? And so that's a categorical qualitative, and it's binomial. It's either on time or it's not. Two categories. So if you had asked that as a question, was this delivered on time? The answers are yes or no. Two categories. questions on that one. I spend a little bit more time on the qualitative ones, you know, making sure you've got that when we get closer to the test and that kind of thing. Or for, it, it, I guess because we'll be calculating means and standard deviations and stuff quite a bit coming up. People tend, tend to get that part, but uh, uh, make sure you get the qualitative stuff too. So the uh, population. All pizza deliveries. And of course, then the sample will be 50 pizza deliveries. And I'm going to give you the first part on the parameter and the statistic. This is going to be the population something. And this is going to be the sample something. And it's going to be, we can't calculate the mean of yes and no. It's going to be the population uh, proportion. Which is P 
and then the sample proportion which is p hat, which in this case is just going to be 41 out of 50. So 0.82 or 82% of them in our sample were on time. Okay, this one is, uh, we're just putting variables into categories. Okay, so all we can do is calculate the percentage of the proportion in each category. So when you had a qualitative or categorical uh, variable, you can only put things into categories and all you can calculate is what proportion or percentage are in each category. So you can't count, you can't calculate the mean, yes, no. Okay, it's the proportion in each category. So that's one of the things of as I was saying before, when you're that looking at things like do we have a qualitative or a quantitative variable, that tells you what kind of things you can calculate. So you can only calculate things like the mean when you have a quantitative variable. And you can, when you have a qualitative variable, really all you can compute is the proportions, at least of the things I put up now. There'll be some other things we'll compute as well, but uh, when it's a qualitative variable we're looking at, percentage or proportion in each category. Okay, so I got 100 households in Russellville, 43 use uh, premium cable channels to watch movies, 32 use Netflix, and 25 use uh, um, Redbox. I didn't put anybody going to Hastings or anything because those they're dying on that, aren't they? Uh, Redbox is kind of taking those guys out. I'm still a Netflix guy, you know, but my wife goes and gets one from Redbox every once in a while because, you know, like one time <laughs> when we were going to Hastings, I was going to go get a movie and she said, will you get something in color? Because, like, I watch a lot of old movies and stuff, so she wanted something that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and now it's with Netflix. Will you get something in English? Although I found last week um, uh, a couple, of, she actually was pretty interested in a couple of Swedish movies. Uh, what was it? The, the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo and The Girl Who Played with Fire. And then. Uh, I think pretty popular novels. The third one comes on instant view tomorrow. So we'll watch that again. Uh, but she does prefer, uh, generally speaking, that they be in English, but I don't know. I'm just as likely to watch something in French or Chinese or Arabic or whatever, you know. Okay, so uh, anyway, what would be an individual in this case? One household. How about the variable on this one? Would be Yeah, I think that. How they watch <laughs> I think I would probably just go ahead right here and put in um, cable, Netflix, and uh, Redbox. That makes it pretty clear to me. Is that going to be categorical or qualitative? It's going to be qualitative, and I have three categories. We really won't do a lot with multinomial variables until quite a bit later in the class, but I wanted to go ahead and get them in here as far as, uh, I guess, more for a sense of being complete on the uh, types of variables and so on. 
And so the population, all, yeah, all, some, <laughs> all households, and uh, 100 households. Just put the HH for household. And um, for parameter, uh, this one's a, a little different, but I'm just going to put it this way for now. The population proportions. So we actually would have a P for each one of the categories. I'm just going to leave it as population proportions and sample proportions. Actually, we get when we actually get to that kind of problem, um, we really won't even look at it so much as proportions. It's a, another kind of thing we'll look at. But that really is what it is. Questions on that one? Yeah. I wanted to mention one more thing, and then we'll take a break for a couple minutes. Um, and that is that... Uh, some of the kind of things, like when you do surveys and kind of things, um, there are two of the kinds of scales that you're likely to see are something called a Likert scale, and another one is uh, the semantic differential. And I'm going to go ahead and say that there's some argument as to whether you should treat these as categorical or numerical. Um, I used to argue for qualitative, categorical. In fact, I remember sitting outside of one professor's office, and I heard another professor calling those uh, quantitative. And I didn't even go see my professor. I went and started arguing with the other guy. But now I treat him as quantitative. So eventually, I, I don't know, I, I switched over to the other side, I guess. But um, well, most things that you'll see would treat these as quantitative. But a Likert scale is just one of those uh, uh, strongly, you've seen these, disagree, disagree. Then they have a couple of other things, and then they'll go over here to agree and strongly agree. You guys have seen those plenty of times. That's just a Likert scale. A semantic differential, which you might, I, you probably have seen this, maybe not as much. Uh, usually what we would do, let's say we just have, I usually use a seven-point scale, but let's say we had just, just this five-point. When I code this in, I would just code those into my computer as one, two, three, four, five, and compute them that way, then compute the means and so on. Semantic differential is something where you have uh, basically two adjectives, like cold and hot. And maybe you have a series of, of, of uh, I guess, bipolar adjective, uh, uh, things there. And you just ask people to uh, circle some, uh, a number in there to indicate that. Um, in some maybe more, um, uh, you might, in a more people way, you might have creative, not creative, or intelligent and stupid or whatever, you know. But then people would just circle those. And I would argue to treat that uh, um, as quantitative. Why don't we take just a short break and then uh, come back in. Yeah.